How hard can it be to make a Peak Scout PNG tuber? Today, we'll explore three levels of difficulty, and whatever I create, I'll make it available to you for free. Level 1. Easy peasy. Launch the game in offline mode and click and hold while holding your passport and customize a character. Avoid creating a blue character so we can use that blue background to our advantage. Now you can make it look however you want with all the tools at your disposal. All you really need is one mouth close and one mouth open. So let's go ahead and screenshot this. I'm gonna hold the Windows button, Shift and S to open up my snipping tool. And I'm just gonna capture that profile within the borders. Now my PC automatically saves screenshots so I have this. Now just take another one with a mouth open. I'll go with this one. If I use the arrows, I can already see the result. Now in OBS Studio, we're gonna create a new scene and we will add a specific source, which is an image reaction source. This is from the image reaction plugin, which you can find by typing image reaction plugin in Google right there. All right, let's add it. Under image when silence, we're gonna click browse. Pick this one. Under image when sound, pick the other one. Set the audio source to your mic, beep, bop, Boop, bop, boop, bop. Adjust the threshold. Testing, testing. Nice. The smoothness. Testing, testing. And we're almost done. Now you want to right click on it. Go to filters. We're going to add a new filter, which will be a color key. Click OK. And when it asks you, hey, what color you want, put custom color. Then select color. And then pick screen color. Click on that once. Click on the blue. Click OK. It should be good. You can adjust it to make it look a little bit better. And just like that, you have your PNG tour ready to go <laughs> you can be more precise with the screenshotting if you don't want it to jump like that but i think that adds even more effect so that's pretty nice on a gameplay scene it would probably look like this i will import it as a scene find png peak and there it is just place it wherever you want bam bam boom bam thank you for the sub welcome to the stream <laughs> level two professional same as before but don't worry about the blue too much so customize it how you want and then take a screenshot this time we're gonna make an hd version of it going to photop.com if you don't have photoshop you're fine photop is free let's open up a new project the top right where it says with i can go 1920 by 1080 create now what i can do is uh bring up my screenshots either drag and drop them from here like that or just control v right after taking them from there what i'm gonna do is top right i'm gonna lower the opacity and we're basically gonna recreate this from well, not from scratch. We're going to pretty much trace it. I don't want this to be a photo P tutorial, but basically we're going to be using uh, a lot of shapes, basic shapes, like the ellipse shape here. I'm going to go and do this, hold shift to make it proportional. So it's a perfect circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be approximate. Boom, change the color. I'm going to lower it, bring that back up, uh, double click on that shape, and then click on the actual color here as a color picker. And boom, there you have it. Just continue doing this. I'm gonna select all those layers from the eyes. I'm gonna control Alt T, right click, flip horizontally, and just duplicate them and place them on the other side. Then I can select them all and group them up by pressing Control G, and that's the eyes. All right, so let's continue. We're just gonna put a bunch of little circles here for the freckles. Double click on the icon, pick the actual color. Nice, and now with the Move tool, I can hold Alt, lower the opacity again. I can just hold Alt, click and drag to place them. Remember what we did earlier, select them all, hold Alt to duplicate, click, drag, Control Alt T to transform, right click, flip horizontally, nice. Okay, for the mouth, I'm actually gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna choose my pen tool by clicking P and I'm going to draw the smile, one point and another. I'm gonna go and press B to bring up my brush tool. I'm gonna right click, make sure it's 100% hardness, so it's sharp. Maybe bring it down a little bit. 10 should be nice. Okay, click away. Go back to the pen tool, right click and click stroke. Make sure you have um, black selected as your main color when you're doing this. And here, tools, brush tool, okay, boom we have a perfect smile. Right click, remove the path. We don't need it anymore. I can name this layer smile. So the rest is basically a combination of the pen tool, creating shapes with the pen tool and doing what I just did. All right, I'm gonna time lapse through this. In order to recreate the shadow on the face, there's multiple ways I could go about it. Uh, I'm gonna try one of them. And I'm gonna add a gradient overlay. Hopefully that works. Um, under the style, I'm gonna go with radial. I'm gonna reverse it. I'm gonna make it quite big. And then I'm gonna click and drag it like that, okay? Based on that, I'm gonna click on the actual gradient and then I can adjust it. Now we are going for something that is not super realistic. So we don't want a soft, soft gradient. So I'm probably gonna go in the middle here, add a new one, double click on that, make it darker. And then there's little, you probably can't see, but there's little handles here 
that I can drag to make things harder or softer. In this case, we want them to be harder. And then I can play with the blending mode to make it affect whatever is underneath it. I'm going to go with um, one of those. I don't know which one yet. Dark in, too dark. Of course, you can play with the opacity also. Multiply, color burn, nope. <laughs> Linear burn, and darker color, nope. So probably multiply. Let's take a look at the original. Yeah, original is much more sharper. All right, close enough. And let's do the rest. Okay, for the top of the cap, I'm going to add a bevel and emboss effect because it looks pretty similar to what they used. I turn it off. See the original? That's mine. And I think we'll use the same gradient overlay that we use for the face. And you know, technically you could put whatever logo you want in there, but I'll stick to the original. We don't want to go too crazy with the intellectual property. I do not have any rights to this. All right, so here's the result for now. You could definitely like spend more time adding more shadows and things like that, but this is not bad. <laughs> this is super clean and you can see just like how HD it is compared to our simple screenshots. Definitely more stuff that I can work on, but most of it is uh, details. All right, we're almost there. Let's also get a mouth open for this. I'm just going to control V and same thing. We'll use the pen tool, draw that shape. And uh, technically, we don't really need the teeth. Yeah, you decide if you want the teeth to be in there because um, this is what it looks like without the teeth. I like it without the teeth, honestly. OK, now all you have to do is export this as a PNG image or two PNG images, one with the mouth closed. I'm going to go file, export as PNG, make sure quality is 100 percent and then save somewhere. Call that mouth closed. Nice. We can see it saved it up there. And then let's turn on the mouth open. It covers the other one. So that's perfect. Export as PNG save. But now that we have access to all of this, we could potentially, of course, we can create new expressions and all that. Like if you're an artist, then it's easy. Even if you're not an artist, this is pretty easy. Like I didn't draw anything manually here, uh, but I can turn off the eyes and uh, probably just put some lines to represent the eyes closed because we will use another thing for the PNG tuber, another software. So I'm going to go in here and then I'll draw something like eyes closed. Drooping a little bit like that. Press B to go back to your brush tool. We kind of want this to be kind of thick. So let's go around 14. All right. For the color, we want the same color as the mouth. So complete black. Go back to pen tool, right click, stroke, click OK. Boom. Right click, remove path. Back to the move tool. Duplicate this. Control Alt T, right click. Uh, flip, turning the eyes back on just so they match a little bit. There you go. Kind of center them. So now what do we have? We have mouth open, eyes closed, right? And finally, mouth closed, eyes closed. So now we're going to use something called Viado Tube Mini to drive our PNG tuber. Viado Tube Mini is a PNG tuber software. You can download it right here. I'll put a link in the description. I actually made multiple tutorials on it, and this was how to get uh, free art to make your PNG tubers. Anyways, so what we're going to do here is up top, you're going to see the four images. We're just going to click on them and replace them. So this is eyes open, closed mouth. All right. Next one is open mouth image. Beep, bop, 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 bop. Then we have closed mouth blinking image. And finally, open mouth blinking image. We have a complete HD PNG tuber. We can, of course, uh, make it jump like this. We can make it so that even when it's chilling, it's basically shaking, vibrating or slowly moving around to give it more of a dynamic presence. You can make it very nervous. And then from there, all we have to do is capture this through um, OBS Studio. So here in OBS Studio, what I can do is, first of all, get rid of this. So now we're going to do a game capture to capture that Vieto tube. So let's go find game capture. Call it uh, PNG Vieto. We're going to set the mode to capture a specific window. That window will be Vieto tube mini. OK, as you can see, the background is gray. So we're going to click on allow transparency. And there you have it. Now, this looks small. That's because my screen is actually 1440p. So this is currently a 1080p PNG tuber. You can place it wherever you want. But also, most importantly, you can add any filters to that. If you watch my other videos, all the cool little plugins, such as the shader filter plugin, you can add a, it's my favorite, chroma UV distortion. Maybe not that much, just a little bit. <laughs> Look at that. Make it move around even more. There's the cartoon effect messes up with the color. <laughs> That's cool. Also, yeah, by the way, you can change the color as much as you want um, with an OBS studio, probably with a hue shift. So you don't have to go back and capture another one. Also, it's not reacting too well to my voice. That's because 
the threshold is not super sensitive. Oh, I completely forgot that I could save this as a Viado mini file. I think I can make that available for you guys so that all you have to do is open up Viado tube, go to the folder here to open a file and then open up that file and it will bring you this one. Look at that, the VHS shader. <laughs> Level three, don't do this. It's been one hour and 10 minutes. Level three is basically going into a 3D software and recreating at least part of the model just so that you can get those four images for a PNG tuber. I really don't feel like doing this, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Honestly, this should just be a time lapse. I'm putting way too much effort in the video that's gonna flop. All right, uh, so we're here in Blender 3D. It's a free software. We're gonna go ahead and... <laughs> bring in a sphere. I don't know if I want to go low poly or if I want to make it extra smooth. Let me go low poly. That way it's not too polished. What we can do is actually import a reference and I'm actually going to reference my HD version. It doesn't really matter. All right. So for the hat, I'm going to do uh, same thing. I'm going to add a sphere and we'll just cut it in half. I'll bring that up, make it smaller. I'll squish it a little bit. I'll delete that bottom half. Cool. Uh, select it. Make sure we put a face. Anyways, for the cap, I'm going to add a loop cut here. I'm going to select that back half here and I'm going to extrude it that way. There you go. That looks decent. Now I want to do the torso and uh, I think I'm also going to use a sphere for that. Okay, we'll duplicate this uh, torso so we can just do the arms. We are getting somewhere. Uh, I forgot to add the tippy top of the cap. All right, we can finally get to the fun part, which is the shading. What I'm gonna do is add a camera to the scene so we can already have an idea of how the final render will be framed. Probably take care of the light. I should go with a sun, but I'm actually gonna go with an area or maybe a spot just because it's easier to manage, at least for me. Go back to the camera view. Let's make this shade smooth. This one also smooth and let's give it some basic materials. I should probably save. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do for the color is I'm going to make it thick. I'm going to add some thickness right now. It's like paper thin. Okay, we might want to get more geometry here. So I'm going to add a subdivision to soften it a little bit. There we go. You can see like we're getting close to like a perfect smooth circle this time and our shadows play a little bit better. Let's do the same thing for the arms, but not the hat. And now for the face, I'm actually going to go back to photo P and I'm just going to use the transparent version of just the eyes and the mouth, for example. Oh no, turns out I had closed it. What am I going to do? So the good news is if you go to photo P and you go to templates, and then you type my name in the search bar, you will actually find the template for this. I didn't have to make it a template, but hey, if you want to go in there, change the color and then export it, uh, you have it. So I can turn off the background for sure. Turn off the face, turn off the blush spots and everything else really like the arms, the shirt details, the color. Now what I can do is export this. So now I need to import those as PNG files. I'll import them as a mesh plane and go find them. Look at that, it even cast a shadow. All right, so I can go in edit mode and I can actually subdivide this. So basically give it more geometry. And we'll do that a couple of times because I want to bend it basically to kind of shrink wrap to the face. Find shrink wrap, target object. We want to pick the head. And then we'll offset this. Not bad, actually. So up here, I think, <laughs> I think it's a little smaller than it's supposed to be. So we can make that bigger. Um, let's add some fabric texture. What kind of skin textures do they have? Ew. I'm going to regret this. Ew. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> this is too disgusting. No, 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 no. Take me back. Yeah, maybe something like that. We can play with the lighting a little bit. All right, I think we're ready to export. <laughs> what would that look like? Hopefully my computer doesn't crash. I have two hours and 46 minutes of footage in OBS right now. All right, not bad, not bad. Uh, I think one of the subdivisions didn't go through. So let me check that on the face. Indeed, render is still at one. I want it at two. It's not perfect, perfect. There's a little bit of artifacts at the bottom here, but um, I'm done. I'm done. Let's save this bad boy. Which one is this? Eyes open, mouth open. 
Now, of course, the huge advantage of having this in 3D is, damn, that texture is wild. If I wanted to, I can have different angles. I might even create like an armature and move it and create animated stuff. There's plenty of advantages in having it in 3D. I was actually thinking of doing a bunch of animated emotes and put them up for free, but we'll see depending on how this video does, if there is interest enough on that. Okay, let's open up OBS. Well, let's save this close it and let's open up OBS and Viado tube. All right. So we have the old one. Let's open up Viado tube and let's just replace them. <laughs> oh God, this looks cursed. <laughs> it, it definitely doesn't have the essence of the original at all. Really? Uh, it looks like something completely different. It doesn't look bad. We can say that that doesn't look bad, but I absolutely understand if you totally prefer uh, the, the original ones. I think I might redo the 3D model to look like the actual ones from the game, uh, just so I can make those emotes projects. Maybe, maybe. If this flops, I'm, you're not you're not gonna see the emotes, not gonna lie. <laughs> Let me remove some of the filters so we can really see. I don't know, this is a PNG tuber, but the fact that it has this realistic lighting and um, in the blinking and everything, it looks like a proper animated thing, especially with the jumping up and down. So this is the type of, my camera's in the way. This is the type of result that you can absolutely get if you learn Blender 3D. <coughs> I'm dying. Uh, total recording time right now is two hours, 54 minutes. So almost three hours to do, <laughs> to do all that. And once again, the images will be in a link in the description. I think I might, yeah, I should probably save this one too. And I'll put a link to those too. If you haven't played Peak yet, it is awesome. You should definitely go buy it and support the developers on Steam. As for me, I have a headache, stuffy nose. I'm probably gonna go to bed. Just kidding. I'm gonna edit this video and try to post it tonight. But yeah, follow me on Twitch because I might stream this.